Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a, a test and development of a top simulator written in Swift. And we're working on the piece today that's the pattern library. So we sketched out a user interface. The Basically, it's a three screen view. So the first screen is the main view with the top drawn on it. And you basically, you list a bunch of pattern names. It'll find those patterns and apply them to the spin of the top. The second view, if you go to the patterns, you get a grid of patterns. And each one is um, a series of dots. They've all got names that get referenced in that first screen. And you can create a new pattern by clicking in the top right corner of the middle screen. And you get a grid. You can turn the dots on or off, and you can put the name in. We've got um, we've got something that draws a top. We've got something that draws the, the grid on the right. But we haven't dealt with the pattern stuff in the middle. So that's where we'll focus today. All right, before we started, I was able to run the test. Everything's passing. We don't have a whole lot, but uh, it's better to have them passing than not. All right, and let's let's start up at the content view. So uh, just refreshing, we've got a content view. That's that first screen. It's um, each of these views is is going to navigate and it goes through. Um, it, it's got a body view that represents the, the actual drawing on that screen. The rest of this is linking the the screen title topple, the name of our game, and uh, uh, trailing, we have a button that's a link to the patterns page. So that just um, that just gets this, you know, that creates this link, this name, defers this to content body. We do something similar for the patterns navigation. We're binding up to the library uh, that that we're creating that represents the grids of objects. And we just have a library view that's going to draw that grid. And it references the library, passes that down. And it, it also has the title and a navigate or a navigation link to the edit edit view. And then finally the edit view has the edit pattern view. Uh, let's see, this stuff on the bottom, I think we can delete. We've we've pretty well put it elsewhere. I'll leave it for the moment, but we'll get there. <laughs> OK, uh, let's focus on pattern view. That's the, the main drawing we have. Uh, nope. Library view is what we're after. OK, so today let's run it. Um, all we have is the text. This is the patterns view like nice. <laughs> um, but we do have a reference to the library, which has all the patterns in it. Right now, we don't have a separate type for the patterns. They're just double array of Booleans. OK, so, um, you know, just drawn out in a little grid. OK, and anything else here? No, I don't think so. This will take a moment. So we'll see the top drawn up here. And then right now, we just have a series of entries where you can type like 1 comma 1 to say, the first half of the circle is on and the second half is off and things like that. Um, we're changing that interface, but for now we have this, the old one. So I guess I can demonstrate it just for, so this should put things in, well, I, I don't know what I bump, <laughs> but clearly there's a keystroke I shouldn't do. One, 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 one. So this puts things in the first quadrants on, the second quadrants off, the third quadrants on and the fourth quadrants off. And I'll just make this take up the whole space. OK, so you can see the inner wheel is that sort of BMW symbol. And then the outer wheel is completely filled. All right, if we go to patterns, this is the patterns view. All right, we go here. We see the, the grid to edit. But we're focused on this one for now. And uh, as it happens, I know there's a grid object in Swift, uh, Swift UI. I, th I think it's collection view maybe I I just don't remember it's like I get deep enough to see like oh there's this there's that there's the other but how do you make it go that's that's always a trickier hmm I seem to have disconnected my searching I've been using DuckDuckGo hmm I hope this doesn't foretell or forebode Connection problems. Well, 
let's try the search again. I'm hoping it did interrupt. So, oof. okay, uh, switch to a grid. Yeah, that's the kind of structure we want. Um, no, that doesn't help as much as I wanted. Listen, stack views. Well, yes, I could make a list of H stacks. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there's an actual grid object. I don't know, I think that makes me wonder if it's a custom thing that they had. UI collection view, yeah. Oh, that's the UI kit name, okay. Oh, well, this is sort of implying. I thought it had a much more flexible view. Well, I hate waiting. <laughs> uh, so let's let's just try and make it and see what happens. All right. So if I make a list, um, I think I can do this. I have to give it an index of stuff. Oh, golly. Oddly slow. <laughs> I say that too often, but uh, today it looks really bad. Lazy V grid, lazy age grid, that's interesting. Well, I don't want to scroll it horizontally. I guess I want a V grid. Okay, lazy well, grid. Container and grains grid. Creating items only as needed. Okay, well, let's let's take this for a starting point. I know lazy grid is a newer thing. Okay. Column is items.
Well, I assume this is running through. It looks like it's running through the items in each category. For each. I guess it's putting the category separately, so I don't think we need that one. Column, let's do library dot keys. Each one of these is a pattern in and then we're going to use our pattern view. And what are we giving it? A binding is a double array boolean. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know if I can create a binding to. Do that. Grid item. Hmm. Can I convert value of type array of string to expect a type array of grid item? Okay, I'm not understanding enough, I guess. Reminder list view, is, is this thing only contain grid items? Well, it said search DuckDuckGo, but it's not searching DuckDuckGo. <laughs> so our library keys is the alphabetized list of names. I don't know what this mean columns. Um, switch UI grid item. Staying grid, okay. Lazy V grid.
config. Okay, so we need, basically we need a spec for the grid size. We'll see how that goes. Config is here. Um, I can add spacing. That's fine. Item in. I guess I got to do the 4H after all. 4H. Library dot keys. I think it's still gonna hmm. string is not identifiable. Maybe um Okay, I'm missing a brace. No. Somewhere I'm missing a brace. Yeah. Okay, maybe we're just grabbing the wrong stuff from the library. I. I thought we, we should get the key for the pattern. Cannot assign through subscript. Let's take the dollar off. Let's not do a binding. I'm justifying this in my head because I know the key is in there because I just listed all the keys, but can I convert value? Is this a question of read only? I think we tried that. Cannot assign through get. Well, we're back. I don't know. We started off with the library. Whoops. Maybe we've taken a wrong turn here. Maybe this. The problem is I make it generic. Hmm. Because we made the library generic over pattern, I don't know how we get to the a default element for a pattern for for the pattern. Um, I thought there was a way to kind of do this, but maybe not. An alternative is I could give a default. Well, that's kind of what we did at one point. Hmm. I'm 
you know, I'm just not sure. Maybe let's let's hide this. Let's see if we're getting anything right. <laughs> uh, let's put out the text of pattern name while our search is running. Nope, you have to specify it there. Oh, maybe I could do that. Right, we could we could make our initialization specify the default value um, that we return if something is not found which is kind of a reasonable requirement. Um, okay, let's see what pattern shows. Nothing, okay. Let's, um, um, let's see, content view. Who declares the initial one? It's here. And we don't have a good way to initialize it. Um, hmm. Let's, what can we do? Let's, let's add a button. Uh, it doesn't need to be quite that fancy, but let's put one down here. The action is library dot add um, a We'll say false and be true. Just, I guess I'm mostly, I'm playing around explicitly here. So label, um, we'll just do text. to array. I guess we need double arrays. Okay. I'm just trying to put stuff in and a button that I can do to add stuff so we can see it in our library. <laughs> and let's see what this is. Create an initializer. Yeah, so I think that's kind of what we're going to do. Okay, so if we go to the patterns view, there's nothing there. New, no, should have created a couple. Okay, and did not. I think the deal is Oh, does our library, I don't think our library is observable. Oh boy. So I think what's going on is the library says it's a binding, but we don't do anything in our library object to notify anybody when things change, which means it doesn't notice that this new happened. So we need to make it um, 
I believe we need to make it observable and then make sure that when you do an add, you, you trigger a change. All right, so I think observable object here. And then I don't, I don't know if this is enough. Normally you would mark the thing you're going to, to look at, but nobody's going to be observing that directly. So I don't know if that will work or not. If it does, then th the mechanism is all automatic. If it doesn't, then we have to add some, uh, this cancelable thing that I always had to look up. <laughs> nope. Okay, so it seems to be in our print button. We can confirm that. Okay. What else can I change to make this more? Well, I guess we want to make sure that the button's being triggered. See, I think the binding, hmm. I think we're bound to the library, but we don't get notification because we're not observing. If I were looking at library.dictionary, I might be able to, to see it. Uh, let's try this. New no, twice. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, oh, where can I find this stuff? <laughs> I know I went through a bunch of this when I was doing the uh, sort tables grid sorting thing. All right, I saw another another crash on the streaming side. Well, maybe while that's going, I'll just go look to find that other thing. Um, but recent. This one. Oh, here's an example. <laughs> okay, so we have these any cancelables. And then when we do that, when we change something, we have to. Uh, notify okay so we hold a set and I'm gonna not check this for now I don't know I probably should but okay and then when you modify something you say this you tell it I want you to create a cancelable uh, cancelable object um, on the thing I'm going to change. I'm going to say create a. It's going to have some listener for to act as a sync, and I'm going to send object will change. I'm not a hundred percent sure on this, so. All right, so the model in this case I think it's self and we need combine to make this flow. I'm not 
quite sure if that's right. Okay, well, that's not a good sign there. So slow. <laughs> okay, that is clearly not right. Here's somebody doing something like what we're doing. Cancelable with two L's, and actually, it's any cancelable. Hmm, okay, so he's saying self.mypeople object will change dot send. And this thing is saying, yeah, you gotta have the cancelables. Dollar zero. So it's the array. I guess we're asking for the notification on the thing that's changing here, the published field, and then we'll notify any listeners. Now, where is he putting the cancelables? Self.cancelables.append. Okay. I think we'll, we'll do that. This should not be self. This should be dictionary. Any cancelables dot insert, I guess append is no different. Append dictionary object will sync, object will change dot sync, receive value, and self dot object will change dot send. Yeah. Okay. Except for one problem. Key colon pattern has no member. Hmm. Well, maybe this part's not necessary. If the I don't know why I can't make this a published field. Insert that's still doesn't like this. Value key pattern. So that's the dictionary. Um
this is really annoying. Okay, can I get Switch UI to publish changes to a dictionary? That seems like kind of like what we want to do. Um, observed object. Hmm. Well, there's a difference between, I guess we would have to be an observed object to make our thing work for one thing. state is morpher structs and we don't qualify anymore okay dictionary is published observed object equals dictionary then in here yeah that seems okay All right, so our class is kind of like this, I think. If we, wherever library got to, okay, I'm saying it is observable object. We're gonna drop all this stuff. It's got a published. Published field here, dictionary key pattern. That seems, like this. Okay. Um, all right. So they don't do anything special. Okay. And then they just use observed object. So I think what that implies for us, this should be, this should be a state object. So if, if you have structs, you can use, or value types, you use state. If you have class types, you use state object. And I think this thing is a class. They're using observed, you know, you're making, um, you're making a class that's an observable object. Okay, published. And then the down here, this needs to be 
the observed object. Okay, and that's going to happen again in our library view. Why it doesn't tell you when you're doing that wrong, I don't know, but I don't think it does. <laughs> okay, and is there one more view? Weird content view go. Patterns navigation goes to library view, yes. Test view, observed, observed object on the thing. So maybe we don't pass the binding for this one. I think. All right, let's build. Run. Our hope is clicking the new button on the pattern will cause the list to show something. <laughs> this new button. Yay. Okay. We're due for a break. So let's take two or three minutes. We'll come back and we'll get this thing generalized to deal with actual grids.
Hi, welcome back. All right, so we left off. We got at least the names of these things showing. Um, it may be... Well, the good news is... Let's try a new again. It'll, it'll replace these. Hmm, that didn't show much. Uh, let's... Let's throw something else in there. Let's throw in... I forget how you do it. Is it is it math dot random? Random. S random. Let's try that. We're just uh, see if we can show different values going in. Now, what I expect is uh, when we hit new, we'll get something that starts with A and something that starts with B. And if I hit new again, I should get two more inserted, uh, two more random numbers. Oh, huh. All right, I look up it's random. Arc for random. Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, so we're running through pattern names. That should be fine. I don't know why they're stacking. I mean, it is a V grid, a vertical grid, something we're doing. Okay, here we go. Yeah. 93, 79. And they're coming out alphabetical. So that is good. I don't care that it's numeric, you know, digit by digit alpha is fine. I'm just proving out that we get a sorted list from our array. It does update when the things update. So this is progress. Okay. And this is going to be a vertical stack. text huh. um well the text goes at the bottom yikes <laughs> invalid character what have i hit <laughs> okay and let's comment that back out. Uh, hmm. All right, that's that's slightly better. I don't know this column config. Let's let's make it a little broader. I don't I don't think that's the issue. Okay, so what I want to do is take one of my well, I want to take the result of library sub pattern name and and get it. So I'm gonna assume let's see, is this control up up? Nope. Shift arrow arrow, something like that. 
Um, there's a way to jump to the test automatically, and I never can remember it. Hmm. All right, but we can certainly do it this way. Okay, so missing pattern returns nil. Actually, we want this to return the default result. And I'm going to make that happen by putting default. Oh, it's a reserved word, isn't it? Let's just give it one. Okay. I want an array. Okay, I need to I need to add to my init. So let's let's add an init. Okay, and the parameter we're gonna have is default value of type pattern. And we're gonna make um And there and self dot default value equals default value. Okay. Um, now my tests are going to be broken because nobody knows about this. So we're going to add these into the constructors. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I need that. I think I need to say this default value or default. Yeah, maybe that's okay. I'm trying to get the look of these things the way I want it. And here we'll take the there you want it you got to say it there should be a production one that doesn't have it yet okay those are just broken because it's catching up all right, now we have our test, which should, well, it'll pass. No, it expects nil, right? So yeah, this is gonna, shouldn't even compile. It does compile. Okay, um, let's make this, oops, library. I'm gonna say this is no longer optional. It must be returned. Now we're gonna get some complaints. Value must be unwrapped. Okay, so if we don't get it, we'll return default value. Okay, our test will fail to compile because nil is not an option. All right, and let's let's give it a default value. We can distinguish true. Let's make sure it's the same down here. It's a little backwards the what I just did, but gets us there. Normal usage is empty, empty array, I think. We haven't really figured out what that means, but um, all right. Let's commit this. So library um takes a default value returned it if no entry matches i don't think that'll happen for us in general because we're going to iterate through the list of stuff that is there okay and oh we had some ui stuff too so um library view i'll just just kind of to trigger a change, not really caring what's in here, but added UI for library support. 
I've written better messages. All right. Um, now, I don't need this. Let's see if we can get this thing accepting it. I feel like there's still issues, but cannot assign through subscript. Hmm. Is that a binding? Can I do it without the binding? Cannot ver convert to tile that expects binding. See, I think we have two very similar things going on. Where's pattern view? See, this one's expecting a binding because it's a two-way connection because this is editable. I'm, I don't know, what should I be doing here? You don't get to change it on the dictionary for free. That's, that's a given. What if I just do this for now? Somebody's got to complain. Cannot use mutating on, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do something I don't like doing. I'm going to... This one is pattern editing view, and this one is pattern view. Okay, and let's find, uh, somebody should complain, I'll build. I had hoped I had hoped to put something on there about is inactive or something like that. Um, okay, pattern view does not get an action. Okay, well, let's see what's going to happen here. I don't think we'll need the button either. Yeah, pattern view this should be become pattern editing view now. Okay. We'll run. We're still not calling it. Are we? I don't know what I left there now. Library, test, library view. Oh, we are calling it now. Okay, so let's see what goes on. New. Ooh. Okay, Um, this is kind of promising. I don't think we need, I don't think we need the button. So we got to take off parentheses somewhere. If you remember, we just put in little one true, one false in the array. So that's that's actually displaying correctly. All right, go to the patterns. 
new. Yeah, that still looks the same. Okay, the A's are false, the B's are true. That's correct. All right. Um, wow. So, I just am not sure. These are awfully, awfully, awfully similar. The problem is the stuff coming out of the dictionary is not editable. So I can't use the binding on it. And I don't know, I can't make those editable directly because that's Hmm. Yeah, the dictionary just doesn't doesn't allow it. Now So what I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe we're just up to the wire it up stage here. If we get to the edit, edit pattern view, he's got a state, it's a var pattern. Uh, that's, yeah, that's that's okay-ish. I just put a little spacer in. Edit the pattern. And the, the content view has the main save on it. Here. And we're supposed to fill in here. Well, can we do that here? Maybe we have to provide I think we're going to have to provide the state rather than the edit pattern view having it. And yeah, this is, I'm just, I'm working on it, but boy, this stuff is just not sticking very well for me. So here's my pattern, that's the state, that declares it. I wanna make a binding to it, which is gonna be pattern of dollar pattern. Okay, and then the edit pattern, this should be a binding. Okay, and then the reason to do that, well, he's also got a name. I don't know. State var name of string. Okay, so he'll need the pattern and the name. And I want a text field. Title key, I think I just had to do the dollar name. Well, that's the dollar name. Can I do it like this?
think that's the spirit of it. Okay, let's build. I don't need this text up here anyway either. I didn't say run. Oh, that's the look. Um the default contents. Um, this is just pattern name. We don't need to edit the pattern. <sighs> but these work. And this works in that I can type something here. Hi. What save is going to do nothing <laughs> excuse me um let's see so at some level this is tying stuff together and like okay um i don't know is it is it deep enough i don't know all right, uh, content body view, that's okay. We're not ready to mess with that. Okay, library, I think we're done with for now. Okay, so the pattern editing view displays everything down to, down to here, Let, let's just toggle let's us um edit pattern view that's what we want to see right okay so we'll fix some formatting on this i mean this should be standard uh h stack spacer text field spacer Okay. Um, okay, that seems okay. I guess we got to do content views. Got to do the work when when the save is hit. That's the reason we have these things around, and it tells you he needs the library as well. Um, he needs to be an observer on the library. Okay, and so somebody will need to pass that in. Okay, so pass the library along. Yeah, we need to know the library because we're going to insert into it. I don't know if there's a way to pass back to a prior view or something like that. It would be nice. Um, name and pattern. And actually, I think this line maybe could make more sense below. Okay, so you're going to save it, dismiss the thing, and put us back on the pattern view. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to keep the actual work in the class as I'm writing. And maybe maybe I need to drive more from the, the view model UI level, drive down more. Um, okay, so if I put a lowercase i in here, notice my spacing didn't do what I wanted. 
Oh, stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will have to work on that default capitalization. Hey, okay. Let's do another one. J. Okay, uh, the ordering, I'm sure it's a dictionary order. Lowercase is after uppercase. We'll make a pattern for A. Kind of symmetric. Yeah. A first. Okay, so our grid is is doing it. It's scrollable. We got a button up there. This new button now we don't need, theoretically. I would like to default in all the letters for you. <laughs> but uh we'll we'll see. Okay, so I think that's actually pretty good. Now we don't have the ability. I would like to click on this hmm yeah I would like to click on this and then jump to the editing for the pattern let you revise it the save would be the same but the, doing this programmatically is a little tricky like today we're at don't make mistakes okay but I think um, we will check that in. We will definitely check that in. So this is um, make pattern screen able to go to new pattern, edit and create the new pattern. Okay. And I believe, let's see, let's double check this, get this junk out. This is the old content view. We have our new content view and somewhere is content body view. Has all this stuff. So the content body view grew out of that first chunk of commented code. Let's take that out. Should have cleaned this up earlier. Okay. This is the numbers list. Yep. Go method is on there. It's translating. Okay. And then my shape is now called arc shape. That's that. Content body view. You are not content body view. Oh, you are. Content view is what I want. This shape is nothing. Okay. Now we can run this thing. Let's do the canvas. The, the canvas lets you see one screen. It does not interactive, basically. But it lets you, f you can fill in sample data so it it's going to default. Well, it defaults to this empty library. Won't affect it. Okay, it does take a moment to, to build. Yeah, a moment. <laughs> All right, while that's going, let's let's update our to dos. I think we're we're behind on that. Okay, make library view show a grid of patterns. We've done that. Should double be a class or struct? I don't think so. 
I think I'm more leaning that I should be using less of custom types because of all these UI things. I don't know. Um, but the main thing is at this point on this screen, I don't want this to be a comma separated list of numbers anymore. I want, I want a list of pattern names and I think the semantics are look up the pattern name, get its grid. If there's a, a, a space, we're just going to put a thin line, a one column width line, maybe. Um, and just append them together. But you have to. You have to convert it into the number form. That's that's a challenge. We haven't enforced that they all have the same width and height. Well, hmm. The fact is they go in through our drawing grid and the grid is always five by seven or seven by five <laughs> with height, right? So five by seven. Um, okay, so we we need to change this to to basically let me enter a list of patterns not comma separated space separated for now we'll just assume you put one one blank space between them and then there's still something because i kind of want i i want them on one side so i need something that specifies a pretty wide thing so maybe maybe i have to give that Hmm. And that's got to be dynamic, interestingly. Well, we can we can see what things are what things are doing. But I'm imagining these little character shapes plop 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 plop. But then to define this grid, we have to read first row all the way across all the patterns. So this is um, this is a noticeable bit of work. All right. What are we? We're still waiting on content view, right? Oh. Preview paused for no apparent reason. And yet it still seems to be trying. I'll try resume. Then maybe we'll try stop and then try it again. I don't know. I'm just going to close some of these down. I don't think they're going to help us too much at the moment. All right, I'll try stop. He's supposed to. Yeah, you know, this sort of stuff is why I don't use this very often. <laughs> it just gets in the way. Hey, there it is. OK. So apparently me running it before was interfering with it, I guess. So this lets us design this screen directly a little bit more. Um, you can select things. OK, here's content body view. I guess I don't get to go inside it. Yeah. All right, but that's that's OK. All right, so what's going on next? OK, so what I want is I want a single line of text. And I think I'll leave the old one up for a minute, too. Um, content body view. Come on. Jump to definition. Yes. OK. Yeah, let's go. Hmm. OK. So it's a bunch of arc shapes. Then it's a bunch of ring definitions. But I'm going to make a new text field. Text field. 
and this is enter pattern name separated by spaces by space is all right and this is dollar um, patterns patterns is just going to be a state for patterns of type string equals nothing okay <sighs> Now, what we're saying the go button should do, oops, what's better? The go button now, well, today it, it goes through the dashes and then does a new top. We're going to do something different. And I'm just going to spell out. Well, I'm assuming I'm going to assume there's a top maker class that is going to give us back a top. Okay, so let's let's just wish it into existence. Top maker equals top maker from that patterns list. And then let top equal top maker dot well let's just do it this way how about this equals top maker sub patterns dot make so kind of um, we're going to assume that there's this class you give it the patterns and it does the job and eventually we're going to say arcs equal top if i could spell it okay um yeah we'll comment this for now and let's just wish this class into existence so it's going to be a model it's kind of a view it's it's really it's really on that line i don't know so we might say view model but it's not really a view model exactly but it's definitely a helper class living on the view side knowing about the view objects and somehow getting us a model object from it and we'll make a new swift class top maker give it a make method and go from there Okay. Initializer uh, takes a string. and make returns top can I do that yep okay um, we will run tests nothing should break at this point that's not a problem And we have to fill in top maker. So we need to take a function that gives, given a list of patterns, which is clearly not enough information. <laughs> uh, maybe it needs to be a library too. Um, but let's, let's just say we've got to create a stub top maker. Okay. Um, I guess we'll need the library as well as the patterns, which means it's probably got to be passed in somewhere else. Um, we'll come back and see if we can test that top maker into existence to convert 
grids of patterns concatenated together and turned into the the spin patterns we want so let's take a break two or three minutes we'll come back and tackle that Welcome back. All right, so we need to uh, let's start adding some tests for Top Maker uh, down here. And we'll add this. All righty. Um, let's see. So, let's make an easy one first. Empty string produces no, produces empty top. Patterns is a string, empty string, and then um, top. 
top does not define equality. Okay, well, uh, it's, um, do I want to do that? I could. I mean, Top Maker could provide a list of arcs. Would that be better? I mean, the only thing we do that makes it interesting from a top point of view is we're passing in the arcs, but maybe, maybe this is just the arcs function produces an empty list of arcs. Um, right, we don't have an arcs on there. Let's go back to top maker. Patterns and let's make arcs returns and this is double array of double you can see why I might want to wrap this type but we don't and let's just put in 1.0 just to be cantankerous all right does this test run now or at least build No, topmaker.arcs. Any cannot transform to equitable. It has no member arcs. Function arcs to double. We'll work on names later. <laughs> um, spin does that too. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm not doing a good direction here. Has no member make. Okay. Yes, you need to. New arcs never used. Right. Not a problem. Okay. Let's see if that builds. Okay, we get 1.0 into that, and this should produce empty arcs. Let's turn this into an empty array. And should pass. But I think we're going to immediately expose we don't have enough information in our next test. Hmm, I don't know why I don't want top knowing this stuff. Maybe it maybe that's what top should be. I we'll see where it goes. Okay, so our next test. Um single pattern. If we give it one pattern, it produces arcs for that. Okay. Um, let's just do a period. Okay, and then the, the assertion is well, let's, oops, I don't know. Maybe we should call this just one dot. The names don't matter. We're not enforcing much on there. Um, arcs, and in this case, he should get a true, no, he should get a, well, he should get a one. 
Whoops. We did that. I don't know why it jumped over there to edit. That should be a 1.0. Or even just a 1. Um, okay. Well, this test is going to fail. <laughs> And the problem is we don't even have enough information. There's no library that we have access to. And TopMaker needs access to the library. So let's, let's make a library. Um, default is empty. And It's string to arrays of bool. They could work on that message. <laughs> okay, default value, yes. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, library we've added it so we need to add something to it one dot is going to get true okay so we have a grid of dots and we want a sequence of arcs okay so if we had that in there and we make a top maker that references that we should get this converted and given to us. Now, nobody takes the the library is great, but we don't have it in our top maker, so there's not enough information to do it. I don't know why I'm being slow on this, but it's going to fail. Okay, so we need to know the library which means we also need it on this one. So I'm assuming the library comes first and this comes second. Okay, top maker does not yet take a library. And let's get over there. All right, so this has to be a library of type library. And we're committing here, it's string to array of bool. Um, bool. Okay, that should build now. Do we have the library up here? We don't. <laughs> okay, where's content view? Content view should own the library, yes. So it can pass it into its child content body view now needs a observed object var library of type library of type string goes to double array of bool And now down here, he can take library. I don't know, I'm trying to break myself of anthropomorphizing. I'm not succeeding very well. All right, I expect some tests to complain. Certainly that same test should fail.
Okay, and only that test. All right. Now, I guess we're going to start getting real here. Let's let's just do a one look up. Um So top maker arcs Well, we're going to need to save it. Library string bool self dot library equals library. And then self dot patterns equal patterns. Okay, and we'll do the work down here. All right, so um, my simplest thing at this point, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of okay iterating over these strings already. So if I take patterns um, and I split, perhaps no. it down here I don't know why they want me to have some words alphabetized up top and some at the bottom split on separator character in order to get ground elements equal to the given element sub sequences of the sequence Omitting empty subsequences. Well, the, where separator just a character? I don't know. It's a function character in a bool. Uh, split separator character. Let's just try that. <laughs> split with separator of space. Okay. That should give me a list of words. Okay, um, use there. And then I want to, I guess I want to map um, the word to it's grid pattern. Library sub dollar zero. Cannot convert to expect to type string. Replace with string. Yeah, I can live with that. Okay, so now I have a list of the grid patterns which is a double array of Boolean. Okay. Um, um, well, <laughs> what I kind of want to do is Can I just return? Can I do a replace? So that's a list of double arrays. <laughs> okay, so each dollar zero now is going to be a double array of Booleans. I don't know. If this is is any better, let 
library of string. What I really want to do at this point, I've got this double array of booleans, and I want to convert it bool to int of that. Where bool to int of array of bool produces an array of double, which double's kind of overstating it. All right. So um, this is um, bool array of type bool array. Okay. So I'm going to go bool array. I'm going to map each entry, which is a row. And that's a row, which is a another array. So I'm going to take that. Um, okay, so this is um, maybe this is bool double array. I feel like I'm way going along between my greens here. Um, if you take and this, it gives you a list of bool arrays. And we're going to do something with them. Well, what's that? We're going to walk through them and, and map. Um, dollar zero, if it's true go to 1.0, else go to 0, 0.0, and then pack those all back up. Okay. And this is returning that, and that is that. Whoops. Convert value of array slice into doubles. Can, I, can you fix it for me? Cannot convert array of sliced elements of strings to double, AKA Because these maps do slices. Ugh. Array slices is double, aka slice array slows double. I don't know. What do we got here? This is a well, it's one of our words and we convert it to string and then look it up in the library. So that gives us back a double array of bool. We pass that into double array of doubles. Oh, is it only mapping to one? Hmm. Let's break it up. No, is that? I'm confused why it's confused, honestly. My bool to int function should give me back an array of. array of doubles. It's not even a good name. <laughs> um, this is 
bool to double. That wasn't a very good job. Okay, I must be I must be a level off. I think we've only done, we've only passed one thing in. Oy. Okay, let's, let's run. That was not a quick green. <laughs> let's hope it's a slow green. It's a nil. Oh. Okay. Um, let's make sure this thing is doing what I expected. Return result. Let's break here and take a look. So we expect result to be one Boolean true. I didn't even get there. Empty string produces empty arcs. Oh, yeah. If patterns dot trim is this, return this. No trim. Well, maybe our one worked. Yeah, so the the one the one we were trying to test succeeded. Okay, um, the one that had the empty string failed. All right, let's get back over here. I don't know. I'm I'm feeling like I'm gonna rename this again. I think it's bools to doubles. just to be a little more explicit. Okay, so we're converting a double array of booleans to a double array of doubles. And I think because we walk through the outer array and then we map across the inner array, we're getting, we're getting one thing converted. Okay, I don't know where the next, hmm. so the next test I want, let's see if I can articulate that. Two patterns concatenate arcs. I think. <laughs> okay, so if you pass one dot space one dot, um, where one dot 